Good morning, brethren, sisters, Church of the Living God. Hello, hi. Rainy out there. It's been very humid, very hot the past couple of days. And now it looks like we're about to be pelted with some more rain. <laughs> this video, brethren, is a collaborated effort. Um, a beloved brother, a dear friend of ours, um, had sent me some notes for this video. And uh, we, we were able to discuss the notes and kind of the premise and way of this video. And the Lord has really taken it into a totally different direction than both myself and uh, our dear brother, our, our friend, had, um, had probably anticipated. But the overall of what um, our brother, our dear friend, sent us, the overall point um, is what the Lord had... Uh, what the Lord wanted to get at is what we will be speaking on. Okay? If that makes any sense. So, thank you, dear brother, my friend. Thank you to all of you. Thank you to all of you again for those of you who have given on to us of your mercy, of your charity, of God's grace, of your kindness. But more so, thank you for your prayers. It's not like those who only give on to us are the ones that we are thankful for. Oh, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. Prayer moves mountains, people. We are thankful for all of you who have prayed for us, who have helped us. Thank you. Thank you. Get your authorized version of the Scriptures. God is a God of distinction. Okay? We know this. God is a God of distinction. He likes separation. He likes distinction. He likes variety. But also in that distinction, there is distinction between we, the church of the living God, his body, obviously, and those of the world, the lost. Okay? And that is derived from from the Old Testament because remember the Jew is the apple of God's eye and we as Gentiles have been grafted into the tree of the Jew okay hold on gotta write that in. okay so I don't forget these links okay so we have been grafted into the tree of the Jew we are not Jews culturally but we are serving we are trusting upon the God of the Hebrews, the God of heaven and earth, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. And in the times that are coming, we need to truly, truly have 110% total faith and trust and dependence on how our Lord is going to provide for we the church of the living God, his body. Before we get caught up. Because once we get caught up, everything changes. Everything changes. But we need to be confident and trust and hope that his ways are right. And we're going to look at some for, uh, for our instruction in righteousness about this distinction and about God's perfect righteous judgment upon that. And upon those who say they are, but they are not. Okay? So, get your authorized version of the scriptures. We are going to be gleaning through several chapters of the book of Exodus. Go to Exodus and your authorized version of the scriptures. We are going to be getting, now we're going to read portions of these uh, several chapters in the book of Exodus. Okay? And this is very neat. Very meek. And also, something that you and I need to remember. God will provide for those of His own. I mean, he, he makes the sun to shine on the evil and the good. He sends rain upon the just and the unjust. But especially those of His, 
who are his, because the Lord knoweth those who are his. Now that doesn't mean because um, we are of the Lord that we are his body. That doesn't mean that we're not going to see trials. That doesn't mean that we're not going to see tribulation. Okay? That doesn't mean that some of us are going to be martyred. Okay? That doesn't mean that some of us are going to lose everything for standing for our Lord Jesus Christ, standing for the truth of the Scripture. Okay? You might have to lose everything. You might have to. You know? People had asked me, I've gotten asked this quite a few times, about the muzzle, you know? It's like, uh, Brad, should I, should I continue and work? And I, and I always answer the same way. It's like, that's between you and the Lord. Because I can't tell someone to, yes, go ahead, so you can work. I, I can't tell you to do that. I can never say that to anyone to do that. Because I didn't. That would make me a hypocrite. I can't do that. So many of you have asked me of that. You know, many have asked you. It's like, hey, Brad, should I? Should I quit my job over... <laughs> I can't tell you to do so. I can't say we're the, the, the muzzle so you can work. I can't tell you to do that. Because I didn't. I didn't. But see, the Lord took me from one to put me into another. Hence, He provided Okay? I always tell people that that's between you and the Lord when it comes <laughs> but when it comes to the steel of the Jesuit punyard yeah you leave your job over that over receiving the steel of the Jesuit punyard which our country here in America and all across the world they are slowly implementing receive the steel of the Jesuit punyard in order to keep your job in that case brethren Say bye bye, especially with that bye bye. Okay, okay. But let's remember God's provision. Exodus chapter eight, verses sixteen on to verse twenty-four. Exodus chapter eight, verses sixteen on to verse twenty-four. Follow me along. You are expected to follow me along. And I'm going to speak to you as though you are, okay? And the Lord said unto Moses, Say unto Aaron, Stretch out thy rod and smite the dust of the land, that it may become lice throughout all, throughout all the land of Egypt. And they did so. For Aaron stretched out his hand with his rod. And for Aaron stretched out his hand with his rod and smote the dust of the earth and it became lice in man and in beast all the dust of the land became lice throughout all the land of Egypt you ever uh, you ever wonder why there was always talk of a lice problem in uh, early Egypt and a lot of them shaved their heads hmm? and the magicians did so with their enchantments to bring forth lice but they could not. See, the, the, uh, the magicians, they could do what? They could mimic uh, turning the water into blood. They could mimic also um, the, the uh, what is it, the serpents, okay? And also the frogs, okay? They could, uh, they could mimic that stuff, but they could not bring forth lice. See, Satan can copycat, can uh, counterfeit many miracles, but there is only so far he can go. It is, there is only so far he can go. Remember that. And the magicians did so with their enchantments to bring forth lice, but they could not. So there were lice upon man and upon beast. Then the magician said unto Pharaoh, This is the finger of God. And Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he hearkened not unto them, as the Lord had said. And the Lord said unto Moses, Rise up early in the morning, and stand before Pharaoh. Lo, he cometh forth to the water, and say unto him, 
Thus saith the Lord, Let my people go, that they may serve me. Else if thou wilt not let my people go, behold, I will send swarms of flies upon thee, and upon thy servants, and upon thy people, and into thy houses, and the houses of the Egyptians shall be full of swarms of flies, and also the ground whereon they are. Right here, verse 22. And I will sever in that day the land of Goshen. Goshen is where uh, the children of Israel were allotted by the Pharaoh previous to this, one of the Pharaohs previous to this, who was actually a wise, good ruler. The Pharaoh that dealt with Joseph. Well, you look at that in the book of Genesis, okay? That Pharaoh was decent. That Pharaoh was wise. He was, he was a good ruler, okay? It's the Pharaoh that is referred to in Exodus and since the, and uh, afterwards that you liken onto a type of Satan. The first Pharaoh that was dealt with uh, Joseph, that was different. He was a different ruler. He was compassionate. He cared. These guys, this guy, not so much. But, and I will sever in that day the land of Goshen, in which my people dwell, there, that no swarms of flies shall be there to the end, that thou mayest know that I am the Lord in the midst of the earth. And I will put a division between my people and thy people. Tomorrow shall this sign be. And the Lord did so. And there came a grievous swarm of flies into the house of Pharaoh and into his servants' houses and into all the land of Egypt. The land was corrupted by reason of the swarm of flies. Sever. He put a difference, a division between my people and thy people. Hold your place here. Second Thessalonians chapter 3 chapter 2 chapter 2 okay we're touching on this again because it's so important right now brethren it's so so drastically important for us <clears throat> second Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 1 on to verse 4 now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, shewing himself that he is God. Falling away, and then that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, okay? The man of sin be revealed after we, the church of the living God, are redeemed, okay? You and I, the, we will not see the son of perdition, that man of sin, okay? Why? Because we're on the earth here, the church of the living God. After we are redeemed, okay, where is that? Verse 8, And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, okay? And then, what's meaning after and then? Verse 7, For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. The he is the body of Christ, the church of the living God. Okay? Okay? But, but the point we're making here is go back to Exodus chapter 8, verse 23. And I will put a division between my people and thy people. Tomorrow shall this sign be. And of course... The falling away, 
the falling away. What is the falling away? I've, I've touched this, touched with you on this on many occasions, and this I am, I am fully persuaded and convinced this is what it's referring to. 1 John chapter 2, verse 19. They went out from us, but they were, they went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. Verse 20, but ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. That unction is the seal of the Holy Ghost and the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. The Lord is that spirit, okay? Falling away. Those who say they are, but they are not. Okay? God putting, what is that? Now go back to Exodus chapter 8, verse 23. And I will put a division between my people and thy people. Tomorrow shall this sign be. And thy people, this is the Egypt that is likened unto the type of a world of the world. Pharaoh, from henceforth, uh, after the Exodus, um, the pharaohs in Egypt, their power just went going down and down and down. Spiritually, though, the Egyptian religion, which is held forth by Roman Catholicism, the Babylonian Egyptian Catholic religion of Mystery Babylon, the Great, the Mother of Harlots, the Abominations of the Earth, modern Roman Catholicism, as led by uh, the army of the Jesuits, okay? But, here, the division between, I will, put a, I will put a division between my people and thy people. Tomorrow shall the sign be. So that division between those who are truly saved and those who are not has become obvious, but very pronounced. They, were not, they went out from us, but they were not all of us. God's the one who is putting the dis, uh, making this division. Showing who is and who isn't. And absolute suffering reveals. And absolute suffering reveals absolutely. Remember, always remember Job. Always keep in... I, I, I'm reading uh, the book of Job again, obviously. But the book of Job, chapters 1 and 2. All that happened to Job... He uh, shaved his head, rent his mantle, that kind of stuff, fell down on the ground and worshipped. Naked came I into this world, and naked shall I return hither. The Lord gave, the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Okay? Through all that stuff that he went through, he worshipped the Lord. Okay? Okay? Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Okay? Now, go to Exodus chapter 9. Exodus chapter 9. We're going to be skipping around in uh, Exodus chapter 9. But we're going to begin at Exodus chapter 9, verses 1 on to verse 7. Then the Lord said unto Moses, Go in unto Pharaoh, and tell him, Thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews, Let my people go, that they may serve me. We're having light flickers. <laughs> For if thou refuse to let them go, and will hold them still, behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thy cattle, which is in the field, upon the horses, upon the asses, upon the camels, upon the oxen, and upon the sheep. There shall be a very grievous moraine. Oh, storm is coming. Storm is coming. With every pun intended. And the Lord shall sever between the cattle of Israel and the cattle of Egypt. And there shall nothing die of all that is the children of Israel's of Israel. And the Lord appointed a set time, saying, Tomorrow the Lord shall do this thing in the land. And the Lord did that thing on the morrow, and all the cattle of Egypt died. But of the cattle of the children of Israel died not one. 
Isn't it amazing how some of you of the Church of the Living God, you're seeing a lot of people um, going through great distress, and a lot of those who are professing Christians going through a lot of distress right now, but yet the Lord is providing for you still? Why is that, huh? Let's continue. And Pharaoh sent, and behold, there was not one of the cattle of the Israelites dead. And the heart of Pharaoh was hardened, and he did not let the people go. All this evidence, all this distinction, all of this. And still, he would not let the people go. There was a reason for that, though. What was that reason? Now let's go to uh, skip down onto verses 13 on to verse 26 in Exodus chapter 9. Okay? Exodus chapter 9, verses 13 on to verse 26 now. And the Lord said unto Moses, Rise up early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews, Let my people go that they may serve me. For I will at this time send all my plagues upon thine heart, and upon thy servants, and upon thy people, that thou mayest know that there is none like me in all the earth. Judgment. Making his point. For now I will stretch out my hand, that I may smite thee and thy people with pestilence. And thou shalt be cut off from the earth. Pestilence, like a graphene oxide pestilence. Graphene oxide. You look that up on your own time, brother, sister. Okay? And in very deed, for this cause have I raised thee up, for to shew in thee my power, and that my name may be declared throughout all the earth. Verse 17. As yet, as yet exaltest thou thyself against my people, that thou wilt not let them go. Hold your place here. Go to Romans chapter 9. Romans chapter 9. Romans chapter 9, verses 13, on to verse 24. Okay? Distinction between saved and lost. Distinction. Division. Okay? But there again, God will allow these wicked people, number one, for to be used for judgment upon, upon the world, to execute His wrath, to execute His judgment, and also to make examples for we to learn from and for others of the world who see God's judgment and God's wrath upon these lost people to maybe turn them okay check this out there are people God hates by the way God does not love everybody God's love is at Calvary okay you don't go to Calvary. You reject our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, the Gospel. Okay? You reject that. God's wrath is for you. Okay? God does not love everybody. God loved and gave, but God's love is not for everybody. Especially those who uh, reject Him. Verse 13 on to verse 24 in Romans chapter 9. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Jacob have I loved, but Esau I have I hated. In the end, brethren, remember, it's God's choice. God's the one who chooses. Okay? We're looking at an exodus. God put a division, a distinction between his people and the Egyptians for us today. There is a division. There is a the distinction between we of the church of the living God, those of the lost world, and especially those of this lost world who are these professing Christians. Distinction. Distinction, brethren. Distinction is so very important. It is God who chooses. Okay? And it isn't this satanic Calvinism thing. Okay? 
got a video where I've already addressed that. I will. I've written it down. I, that will be linked in this video as well. Okay. But it is God's choo uh, choosing. He is the one who chooses. It's His choice. Because He knows your heart. Remember? Yeah, God does know your heart. Whether or not it's filled with pride and evil. Or whether or not it is broken, contrite, humble, and belongs unto Him. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. For he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but God that sheweth mercy. It's not of him that willeth. Just believe. Nor of him that runneth. But God that you with mercy. See, God's requirements for him to save you are simple. Brokenness of your self-righteousness. Contrition. Godly sorrow. And in godly sorrow, in that godly sorrow and brokenness, that will produce, ought to produce, the fear of the Lord. And in the fear of the Lord, you will call upon the name of the Lord. And may he save you. Okay? But, verse 15, For he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. You want a good definition of grace? There you go. Exodus chapter 33. Exodus chapter 33. This is what Paul is quoting. Okay? Exodus chapter 33. Exodus chapter 33, verses 14 on to verse 19. Our Lord speaking unto Moses after the debacle of the golden calf. And he said, My presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. And he said unto him, If thy presence go not with me, carry us not up hence. You don't go to warfare at your own charges. It's the Lord who will guide you, remember. For wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? Is it not in that thou goest with us? So shall we be separ separated Holy division, distinction. <gasps> really? Not blending ourselves into the world, being of the world to win the world? No. But distinction. Remember, we are called to be a peculiar people. Especially right now. Okay? For wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? Is it not in that thou goest with us? So shall we be separated, I and thy people, from all the people that are upon the face of the earth. And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken, for thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. Does the Lord know you by name? The Lord knows who you are. But does he know you by name, meaning personal relationship? Remember, the easy believism devil heretic coadjutor, they say prayer is a work. Hmm. And he said, I beseech thee, shew me thy glory. The, you wanted to find grace unto someone? Here's your definition of grace. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee. All my goodness. It's all of the Lord. And I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee. 
For there is only one name given among men under heaven whereby we must be saved, the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, God our Father. And will be gracious, to whom I will be gracious, and will shew mercy on whom I will shew mercy. It's of the Lord's choosing, dear friend. Yes, you devil, devils, God knows your heart. But in many of your cases, he knows that it doesn't belong to him. You're waiting till your deathbed or some crazy nonsense like that. You're fakes. Okay, but yes, God does know the hearts of all men. The only ones that are his are the ones that are broken, contrite, and fear him. Which none of these people who take it upon themselves, who just believe, not one of you believe, uh, fear the Lord. You don't. It's obvious. Go back to Romans chapter 9. Picking up at verse 17. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for the same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might shew my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. And you look in the book of Judges, that the name uh, of Jericho, uh, and even the Philistines, is like, this is the God who did all those wonders in Egypt for his people Israel. Even today, even though Satan through the Bibles, and through his church, Roman Catholicism, and his army, the Jesuit order, even though he tries to get people away from that. Yes, God allowed uh, Pharaoh all this so he could prove himself unto the world. He didn't need to prove anything, but to make a name, to make a point, okay? God doesn't need to prove anything to anybody, okay? But he did that so his name will be glorified, magnified, to prove a point. All things that were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Let's continue. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for the same purpose have I, have I raised thee up, that I might shew my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will he hardeneth. Thou wilt say then unto me, Why doth he yet find fault? For who hath resisted his will? And th again, this is not talking about the satanic teaching of Calvinism of elect and non-elect. God has elected the way of the cross. And if you go to God through the way of the cross, our Lord Jesus Christ, okay, where God's love is manifested at Calvary, and you um, go to Him on His terms, and He save you, you are part of the elect today. It's not this Calvinism, you're going to heaven, you're going to hell. No, no. Watch the video on Calvinism that I'll put in the description box, okay? But let's continue, okay? Verse 18 again. Therefore hath He mercy on whom He will have mercy, and whom He will He harden them. Okay? Thou wilt say then unto me, Why doth he yet find fault? For who hath resisted his will? Nay, but, O man, who art thou that repliest against God? Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? You can use that verse actually for a good rebuttal to those who believe that abortion is okay. Abortion. When life is conceived, not when someone just draws breath. No, life begins at conception. Okay? Not when the baby just comes out and... <gasps> okay? That's heresy. Okay? Verse 21. Hath not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? These evil people are being allowed to live, to be made an example of, 
okay? And there are those of the church of the living God who have messed up and whose lives are ruined by sin. They're serving as examples, as bad examples for us as the church of the living God how not to do. See, God will not leave anyone without example. God will not leave anyone to their own going. Clearly the things of him are, are seen by the things that are made. Hath not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? What if God, willing to, make, willing to shew his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction. And you're fitted to destruction when you reject the gospel. Okay? The gospel is there. He paid the price for sin. He died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And he shed his blood on the cross to make atonement for sin. Okay? It's there. But see, his requirement is brokenness of self-righteousness, godly sorrow, contri uh, contrition, for you are at fault for him dying, and the fear of the Lord, that he can put you in hell, and will put you in hell unless he save you. And that, again, that is not a one, two, three, that is a one fluid motion. It happens just like that when you come to him on his terms and not as a thief not as a thief that go up another way okay verse 16 so then it is not of him that willeth your will you you willeth <laughs> you easy believism devils because you're saved just by your own doing nor of him that runneth but God that sheweth mercy that runneth those who are very fervent thinking they're saved of the church of the living God. Lord, we have called unto you. We have fasted for you. We have cast out devils in your name. Then will I profess unto you, I never knew you. Depart from me, those of you who work iniquity. See? Let's continue. Verse 23. And that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy which he had afore prepared unto glory? Oh boy. You hear that? Storm's coming. Oh! Verse 24. Even, on, even us whom he hath called, not of the Jews only, because remember in the Old Testament, the Jews, it was just the Jews, in order to be uh, right with God in the Old Testament, you had to go follow the precepts of the Jews eventually, sooner or later. Okay? <laughs> there were those who made vows unto the Lord, but see, to be right with God in the Old Testament, you had to follow the law. You had to follow the law. You had to go to the synagogues to learn how to follow the Lord. But today, in this dispensation, that Holy Ghost the Holy Ghost, our Lord is that Spirit, is given unto those whom our Lord saves. Different dispensation. Eternal security today. Not eternal security during the law. Even us whom he hath called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. And again, we have been grafted in to the tree of the Jew. Time of the Gentiles. Salvation is of the Jew. We grafted in. Go back to Exodus chapter 9 now. Exodus chapter 9. Where were, where did we leave off? Where did we leave off? Picking up at verse 18. Behold, tomorrow about this time I will cause it to rain a very grievous hail, such as hath not been in Egypt since the foundation thereof, even until now. Send therefore now, and gather thy cattle, and all that thou hast in the field. For upon every man and beast which shall be found in the field, 
and shall not be brought home, the hail shall come down upon them, and they shall die. Now check this out. Verse 20. He that feared the word of the Lord among the servants of Pharaoh made his servants and his cattle flee into the houses. Verse 21. And he that regarded not the word of the Lord left his servants and his cattle in the field. Look at those two verses. Perfect example. There are people out there who are not saved at the church of the living God who are speaking truth about what is going on right now. Even going to the scriptures themselves. Uh, I saw a video about how uh, there are these devil um, professing Christians out there who like to go to the Sermon on the Mount and use the teachings of the Sermon on the Mount to justify uh, people going to get the steel of the Jesuit poniard and using the, oh, God would want you to do that, you know, turn your cheek and whatnot. Run with them a mile, okay? Compromise. Kill yourself. That's what, um, you know, that's what a lot of these Christians, that premise that they are going off of. <laughs> like getting the steel of the Jesuit poniard is the Christian thing to do. And you know what? You know what? It is. It is the Christian thing to do. We Christians, brethren, we are of the church of the living God. Okay? Division. Distinction. Okay? What is Christian? Catholics. Mormons. Lutherans. Baptists. Methodists. Charismatics. Emergents. Those are Christians. We who are saved, we are of the church of the living God. Division, distinction, separation, brethren. Do you get it? But, like I said, there are lost people out there who are preaching truth, speaking truth, but yet they are not of the church of the living God. I saw, like I said, I saw this video uh, where this guy was actually saying, it's like, yeah, these Christian guys are trying to take this Sermon on the Mount and twist it to fit their agenda. And even he, as a lost man, was like, that, that's baloney sandwiches. And he was lost. He's lost. If lost people can discern that, why are some of you out there listening to these Christians who are saying to you, Jesus would want you to go and uh, submit to the steel of the Jesuit poniard. That's lunacy. That's heresy. Look at those two verses again. He that feared the word of the Lord among the servants of Pharaoh made his servants and his cattle flee into the houses. They took warning, even though they didn't believe. Okay? Even though they were not of Israel. Okay? But they sure did believe what the Lord said, didn't he? Didn't they? Enough to say, okay, you've been doing all this stuff to us. And now he's saying that we were going to take heed. In verse 21. And he that regarded not the word of the Lord left his servants and his cattle in the field. Those who don't take warning. Those who do not come to the Lord on His terms. Brokenness. Contrition. Fear of the Lord. Calling upon the name of the Lord. God has requirements for salvation today. <gasps> yes. Yes. Because remember, you do not take it upon yourself. You go to Him on His terms. He knows your heart. Okay? Let's continue. Verse 22. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch forth thine hand toward heaven, that there may be hail in all the land of Egypt, upon man and upon beast, and upon every herb of the field throughout the land of Egypt. 
And Moses stretched forth his rod toward heaven, and the Lord sent thunder and hail, and the and the fire ran along along upon the ground, and the Lord rained hail upon the land of Egypt. So there was hail, and fire mingled with hail, with the hail, excuse me, very grievous, such as there was none like it in all the land of Egypt since it became a nation. And the hail smoked throughout all the land of Egypt, all that was in the field, both man and beast. And the hail smote every herb of the field and break every tree of the field. Only in the land of Goshen, where the children of Israel were, was there no hail. Exodus chapter 10. Exodus chapter 10. Exodus chapter 10, verses 21 on verse 23. Now, we just saw about those who regarded the word of the Lord, you know, believed in what he said about, hey, I'm going to send this stuff on you. If you don't take cover, you're all going to be destroyed. And those guys were like, oh, yeah, yeah, we, we see. And they got in, but those is like, ah! Check this out. Exodus chapter 10, verses 21 on to verse 23. And this is a judgment against the sun god, Ra. The modern sun god today is the little flesh wafer god called the Pucharist. And remember, you know what a monstrance is? That's where these devil Catholics will take their little flesh wafer god and put it into this thing that looks like the sun. Yeah, 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 yeah. Check this out. This judgment is a direct kind of God snuffing his nose at the religion of men. And the religion of men is the religion of Satan. Because Satan favors the things that be of man, not of God. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand toward heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, even darkness which may be felt. It's, it's thundering right now. You've probably even seen the lights flicker as we've been speaking getting dark out there. Storm is coming. And Moses stretched forth his hand toward heaven. And there was a thick darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. Darkness that could be felt. They saw not one another. Neither rose any from his place for three days. But all the children of Israel had light dwellings. Light in their dwellings. You know where we're going, don't you? John chapter 1. Have to go there. Have to go there, brethren. John chapter 1. There's a, 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 a darkness set on, uh, sent on Egypt. A darkness sent upon Egypt that can be felt. For our instruction in righteousness, Pharaoh is a type of who? Satan. And Egypt is a type of what? Our world today. But, what does that say? In verse 23, But all the children of Israel have light in their dwellings. John chapter 1, verses 6, on to verse... 11. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light, capital L, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. Also, those are both capital L's. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him. 
and the world knew him not. Darkness that can be felt. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. His own being the Jews, the Hebrews. But of course now we have to go back to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. We have to. Okay? 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 9 under verse 12. We have to. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. Verse 23 in Exodus chapter 10. They saw not one another, neither rose any from his place for three days, but all the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. Look at verse 21. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand toward heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, even darkness which may be felt. Verse 11. And for this cause God shall send them, send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness, a darkness that could be felt. You reject the Lord? You don't want to receive the love of the truth that He will give you by coming to Him on His terms? There's an old saying, be careful what you, what you wish for. You'll get it. Exodus chapter 11, verses 1 on to verse 7. And the Lord said unto Moses, Yet will I bring one plague more upon Pharaoh, and upon Egypt afterwards, he will let you go hence. When he shall let you go, he shall surely thrust you out hence altogether. Speak now in the ears of the people, and let every man borrow of his neighbor, and every woman of her neighbor, jewels of silver and jewels of gold. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Moreover, the man Moses was very great in the land of Egypt, in the sight of Pharaoh's servants, and in the sight of the people. And Moses said, Thus saith the Lord, About midnight will I go out into the midst of Egypt, and all the firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die, from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sitteth upon his throne, even unto the firstborn of the maidservant that is behind the mill, and all the firstborn of beasts. And there shall be a great cry throughout all the land of Egypt, such as there was none like it, nor shall be like it any more. But against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue against man or beast, that ye may know how that the Lord doth put a difference between the Egyptians The Lord is the one who puts the difference. The Lord is the one who will change your life. You don't do it yourself. The change comes from the Lord. Don't, 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 don't. Watch it. Okay? Not because you believe and then you take the initiative to change your life. No. No. He's not going to force you, but he's going to show you what to do and what not to do. But against the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue against man or beast, that ye may know how that the Lord doth put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. And of course, this is talking about the Passover. And then the Passover, I'll, I'll link a video, that an old video that I did talking about Passover, how Christ is our Passover. The, uh, the way of the cross our Lord chose from the beginning. They did not know about the way of the cross from the beginning. 
that heresy of they were looking forward to the cross uh, in Abraham's time. No, no, no. Already did a video, and I believe that's covered in the Calvinist video. Okay, no, but God from the beginning chose the way of Calvary and signified it and showed it in the uh, blood on the uh, the lintels and the, on the top there. Okay, top side to side with blood, killing of the lamb. Okay. I'll link the video on the Passover in this video, just so so you can see it, okay? But, go now to Exodus chapter 14. Now, the death of the firstborn came about, and the Egyptians, Pharaoh's like, get your stuff and get out of here. But very similar to the children of Israel in the book of Jeremiah, when they let their, uh, their servants go, they did something right in the eyes of the Lord, but they turned they turned and took back their servants just like they did in the book of Jeremiah okay you go look that up on your own time but check this out Exodus chapter 14 verses 1 on to verse 18 okay and the Lord spake unto Moses saying beg your pardon speak unto the children of Israel that they turn and encamp before Piharioth, between Migdol and the sea, over against Baal Zephon. Before it shall ye encamp by, by the sea. For Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, They are entangled in the land, the wilderness hath shut them in. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart, that he shall follow after them. And I will be honored upon Pharaoh, and upon all his hosts that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord, as they did so. And during the time of Jacob's trouble, after we are redeemed, the world is going to know that Jesus Christ is the Lord. And it was told the king of Egypt that the people fled, and the heart of Pharaoh and of his servants was turned against the people. And they said, Why have we done this? Why have we done this? That we have let Israel go from serving us. Again, I, I right offhand, I can't uh, remember where it is in Jeremiah. But uh, in the law, our Lord says that you're supposed to let your servants, being Hebrews, go at like the year of Jubilee or something like that. And they did. They let all their servants go. But they turned. They changed their minds and brought back their servants so that they may serve them. They had done something right, but they, they changed. It didn't last. It was just a passing fancy. Oh, kind of like uh, the uh, seed that's sown among thorns and thistles and stuff like that. And it grew up and choked the word and it become unfruitful. Or that it, it endure for a while until persecution come because of the word's sake. And then by and by they are offended. Yeah, yeah, having no root in themselves, not founded upon a rock, but upon sand, you get it? Distinction, okay? And he made ready his chariot, and took his people with him. And he took six hundred chosen chariots, and all the chariots of Egypt, and captains over every one of them. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh king of Egypt, and he pursued after the children of Israel. And the children of Israel went out with an high hand. But the, but the Egyptians pursued after them. All the horses and chariots of Pharaoh, and his horsemen, and his army, and overtook them, and camping by the sea, besides Piharioth, before Baal Zephon. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and, behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were sore afraid. And the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord, and they said unto Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in, this, in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us, to carry us forth out of Egypt? You take a stand for the Lord. You lose your job. You quit your job. And things seem to go south. And then you say, it's like, Lord, I took a stand for you, and nothing good has come. What, what? 
ever since I started, like Moses himself said at the beginning of uh, Exodus. It's like, Lord, since I came to speak unto these people, they've made it worse for us. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will shew to you today, which he will shew to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me, speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. The Lord is like saying, it's like, okay, hurry, go, go. Don't, I'm with you. I'm going to do this. Okay, don't worry. Let's do this. Okay, yes, great you're talking to me, but why, why are you doing this? Let's, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Rapido. Come on. Let's go. Muy rapido. Come on. Okay. But lift thou up thy rod, and stretch out thine hand over the sea, and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. And I, behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, and they shall follow them. And I will get me honor upon Pharaoh, and upon all his hosts, upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. And the Egyptians, the world, shall know that I am the Lord when I have gotten me honor upon Pharaoh and upon his chariots and upon his horsemen. You know, during the time of Jacob's trouble, midway, I believe personally, that the Jews are going to realize everything that we of the Church of the Living God, who hold to the authorized version of the scriptures, not a Bible, um, we're telling them the truth and warning them of the truth. They will get it eventually. They will get it eventually. Obviously they will. But others in that time period, when it will will they get it? That Satan is manifest there and that man of sin, the son of perdition? It says in the book of Revelation that uh, through all these judgments, uh, what is that, uh, Revelation 9 or something like that, where they repented not of their, uh, of their sins to give God the glory. So during the time of Jacob's trouble, People are going to know that it's coming from the Lord, but yet they're not going to repent and give Him the glory. <laughs> Very valid question. How many Gentiles during the time of Jacob's trouble, how many Gentiles are there going to be? Gentiles that are going to make it. Good question. Very good question. Isaiah chapter 13. Isaiah chapter 13. Verses 9 on to verse 11. All you lost people. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh. Uh, 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 Ezekiel 13 verses 9 on to verse 11. <laughs> 9 and 11. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. The sun, S-U-N, shall be darkened in his going forth, and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. The time of Jacob's trouble is God's wrath on what? And I will punish the world for their evil, and the wicked for their iniquity. And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease, and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. The arrogancy of the proud. Some of these easy believism devils who are saved by their own doing, their own belief, some of the most arrogant, big smile, some of the most arrogant people I've ever seen. Unfortunately, that arrogance also of pride 
does bleed over onto some of us of the Church of the Living God. Uh, the ones that only count are the ones who give and not pray. Not giving credit to where credit is due. Not remembering from whence you yourself came. That's what a thorn in the flesh is for, brethren. Lest ye be exalted above measure. I always said that my thorn in the flesh was my memories. No. My thorn in my flesh is literally my heart condition. Really got to be careful about pride. God's judgment is coming on this earth. He's going to punish the wicked and the world at the time of Jacob's trouble, which is God's wrath upon this earth. But right now, right now, okay, right now at this time, we are going to see some trouble. Like I said, they're, t they're pushing. Steal of the Jesuit poniard or no job. Not everywhere, but that's slowly coming to pass. France. Wow. You look at, look up some of the stuff that they're doing in France. Wow. Walking around coffee tables, having people set, uh, holding up their cell phones, and these cops with the bruzzle on, which has graphene oxide in it. Look that up, okay? Uh, checking these things. Distinction. Okay. Prover uh, Proverbs. Psalm. Chapter 7. Psalms. Chapter 7. Verses 6. On to the close of the psalm. Arise, O Lord, in thine anger. Lift up thyself because of the rage of mine enemies. And awake for me to judgment that thou hast commanded. And awake for me to thee, the judgment that thou hast commanded. So shall the congregation of the people compass thee about. For their sakes, therefore, return thou on high. The Lord shall judge the people. And look at this. Judge me, O Lord, according to my righteousness and according to mine integrity that is in me. Now, that's a dispensational difference because your righteousness was following the law, what you did, because the seal of the Holy Ghost, our Lord Jesus Christ, that circumcision made without hands, which is our Lord living in you, okay, that seal of the Holy Ghost was not there during this time period, okay? Body, soul, and spirit, body and soul were connected. Okay, that's why don't touch that in the Old Testament or your soul would be in danger. Eternal security wasn't there. Okay, Today, His righteousness is imputed unto us. Something that lost people have no concept of. Okay, but Keep that in mind. Oh, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end. Oh, how often do you pray that, brother, sister? But establish the just for the righteous God trieth the hearts and reigns. Yeah, God, yeah, God does know your heart. Yes, he does. But is it his? You say it is. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny him. And the fact that people like that are still alive and not put down, you know, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 5, look that up tells you that they are not of us. Let's continue. My defense is of God, which saveth the upright in heart. How are you upright in heart? When you're broken, contrite, and you fear the Lord, you do it according to His standard, not going up some other way as a thief and a robber does. If he turn not... Oh, okay. My defense is of God, which saveth the upright in heart, God judgeth the righteous. Chastisement, rebuke, correction. 
Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Faith, prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves? Okay. One second, brethren. Sorry about that, brethren. I had a had a delivery I had to go take care of. Okay. Let's pick up at verse ten. My defense is of God, which saveth the upright in heart. God judgeth the righteous. And God is angry with the wicked every day. You're lost. You're a professing Christian. God's angry at you. He's angry at you. Yes. Yes. God's wrath is upon you. If you do not come to him on his terms. You reject the gospel. You are a child of wrath. God's love is not for you. Esau, uh, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Okay? If he turn not, going from unbelief to belief, the devils also believe in tremble, you devils. He will wet his sword, sharpen it. He hath bent his bow and made it ready. If he turn not, See these uh, easy believism devils again. Repentance has gone from unbelief to belief. No. What are you turning from? Yourself. You are your own idol. Yourself. You do believe in a God. You lying devils. You atheists. You lost people. You believe in the God that you look at in the mirror. Okay? The turning. The repenting. Is of yourself. Your self-righteousness. I know that's so difficult for so many of you lost people. Better be it now than when it is too late. He hath also prepared for him the instruments of death. He ordaineth his arrows against the persecutors. All you Jesuit coadjutor devils who are, have been attacking the church of the living God, your, 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 your time is coming. This is your hour in the power of darkness. Yeah, live it up there, fuzzballs. Yeah, big smile. But your damnation is just. You're going you're gonna to get what's coming to you. You really are. You really, really are. Remember that, brethren. They may win a victory, but they ain't going to win a war. They ain't going to win the war. No way. Don't forget that. Behold, he travaileth with iniquity, and hath conceived mischief, and brought forth falsehood. Every single one of these devil coadjutors, okay, these wicked people. He made a pit and digged it, and has fallen into the ditch which he made. And yeah, these devils do fall into their own pits that they try to catch us, the church of the living God, in. They do. You're going to be snared by your own devices there, devils. <laughs> As I like to say, up the dosage there, buddy. His mischief shall return upon his own head. And his violent dealing shall come down upon his own pate. You're going to reap what you sow. Because our Lord God, our Father Jesus Christ is a God of judgment. You're not going to get away from it. I will praise the Lord according to his righteousness. And will sing praise to the name of the Lord Most High. Again, right there. I will praise the Lord according to His righteousness and will sing praise to the name of the Lord Most High. When our enemies fall, brethren, we praise the Lord for His righteous judgment. God is a fair, righteous judge. And He judges righteously. So when our enemies who hate us, who would kill us, when they fall, Praise the Lord for His righteous judgment. 
Psalm 37. Psalm 37. Psalm 37. I went uh, went and tried to pick out pieces of this, uh, uh, but we're, we can't. We're going to read the whole thing. <gasps> 40 verses? Can you handle that? Remember, brethren, what we looked at in the Exodus. It is God who puts division between us and that. And that includes these professing Christians. That doesn't mean that we're going to get out scot-free, meaning that we're not going to lose jobs, homes, family. I, everybody that we talk with, my wife and I, everybody is having fi family problems. Everybody. Everybody. Okay? Doesn't mean you're not going to lose your home, your health, doesn't mean you're not going to be martyred. Those are all possibilities. But remember, 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 precious is in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his saints. And even though he may take away the everything, that does not necessarily mean that he still will not provide for you in his time. Brethren, Psalm 37. Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. You don't want any of that. Your cup of coffee, your donut, your going to your Walmarts are not that important for you to risk your life over. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass, and wither as the green herb. Brethren, trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. How do you do good? According to the Lord. Live according to the scriptures. Examine yourselves every day. Judge yourselves according to the scriptures. Okay? Here's how you live. Not uh, in faith and practice. And that practice also includes your health. Natural remedy. Okay, let's continue. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Delight thyself also in the Lord, that his judgments are right, true, equal, fair, righteous. When the Lord says for you not to do something, it's for your benefit. When he tells you not to eat that, it's soon. Trust me! It's for your benefit. And you will delight in his way because he, you know that you doing it according to his standard will benefit you not only here, but also up there. The desires of our heart ought to be to please the one who died for us. And the desire of our heart as the church of the living God is to live and align our lives according to the scriptures. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. What is that in Job? What is that in Job? Job, what is that? 17, right? Job 17, or is it 15? It's Job 15. Job 15. Job 15. Verse 17. Oh, no, no, no. Or is it 17, 15? Beg your pardon, brethren. One second. Beg your pardon, Job 13, 15. <coughs> Job 13, 15. Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. But I will maintain mine own ways before him. Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. But I will maintain mine own ways before him. 
That doesn't mean that you live a, a contrary to the scripture. If something's going on, you don't know why, you're like, Lord, why is this happening? Stick to the scriptures. Okay? Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light. Remember what we looked at in John? And thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger, and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. You don't do evil that good may come. Like it talks about in the book of Romans. God forbid. Your damnation is just. And also, uh, be ye angry and sin not. And let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Because anger resteth in the bosom of fools. You angry there, brother? <laughs> For evildoers shall be cut off. But those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. And that doesn't mean sit and be idle. Serving, waiting, serving the Lord as he would have you to do so. In whatever capacity it is that he has called you to. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be. Yea, thou shalt diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. But the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. The meek will inherit the earth, the kingdom of heaven. Reference unto the kingdom of heaven. Okay. The wicked plotteth against the just, and gnasheth upon him with his teeth. They do that all day long. That's all they do. That's all they do. They hate us. They'd kill us if they had the chance. Unfortunately, the chances are of that is improving for them. The Lord shall laugh at him, for he seeth that his day is coming. Consider that. Those who attack the church of the living God, his body, the Lord's going to laugh at you when your calamity comes. Lord is going to laugh at you when your calamity comes when he serves his wrath upon you for you attacking his body. Oh boy. The wicked have drawn out the sword and have bent their bow to cast down the poor and needy and to slay such as be of upright conversation. They make the guilty to feel at ease with their sin. And the ones that are at ease with God, they want to make them feel guilty. Wicked these people are. Their sword shall enter into their own heart, and their bow shall be broken. A little that a righteous man hath is better than the riches of many wicked. Oh, look at that verse. Look at that verse. As my wife uh, likes to, she loves this verse. Uh, I would rather uh, be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. I brad eyes that, excuse me. But look at that verse. It's better to have hardly nothing than to compromise and go along with this, uh, you know, to get the steel of the Jesuit punyer. Better to have little. What does that say? A little that a righteous man hath is better than the riches of many wicked. What will, it, what will it profit if the man gain the whole world and lose his own soul? What is it going to profit you to go along with this? Or you can get back to normal. This is the new normal. The Lord knoweth the days of the upright. Your life, church of the living God, is in his hands. God 
us. Uh, uh, the life of everybody is in God's hand. But here, the Lord knoweth the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. Verse 18, the Lord knoweth the days of the upright. Those of the church that live in God, who came to him on his terms, broken, contrite, and in the fear of the Lord, called upon the name of the Lord. Okay? Have a changed life that comes from the Lord guiding them. Alright? They're a new creature in Christ Jesus. Alright? He knows the days. Our Lord knows when the rapture is going to come. He knoweth the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. He knows, obviously, only the Lord knows when he's going to be like, okay, come up, Heather, that's enough. And what does that say? And their inheritance shall be forever. We have an inheritance, incorruptible, which fadeth not away. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time. We are resting in hope because we are looking for the blessed hope. This is an evil time. You and I as the church of the living God, they shall not be ashamed in the evil time. You, don't you ever be ashamed for taking a stand for our Lord Jesus Christ, for standing for the scriptures. Don't you ever be ashamed of that. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. Oh, I shouldn't have quit my job because they're mandating this and that. No. In his time, he will provide for you and reward you. Maybe not how you want or think, but remember, he will provide all your need in his riches and glory of Christ Jesus. Just Brad I said, pick your part. Okay? They shall not be ashamed in the evil time. And in the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. And an actual famine is being concocted. Famine is coming, brethren. And what is it, you know, in the day and in the days of famine, they shall be satisfied? Verse 3. Trust in the Lord and do good, so shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. You live the Lord's way. The Lord will reward you. But see, in order to truly live the Lord's way, you have to be of the church of the living God, saved, born again, converted. Okay? Let's continue. But the wicked shall perish, and the enemies of the Lord shall be as the fat of lambs. They shall consume, and to smoke shall they consume away. Ah, yes. And the smoke of their torment riseth up forever and ever before the Lamb. Okay? The enemies of the Lord. Roman Catholics. Easy believism heretics. 90% of the Baptists. Ah, uh, the Lutherans. <laughs> the Methodics, the Charismatics, and so on and so forth. The Jesuits didn't need to say that, but they're all the enemies of our Lord. And what is it? But the wicked shall perish, and the enemies of the Lord shall be as the fat of lambs. They shall consume into smoke. They shall consume away. The wicked borroweth and payeth not again. But the righteous sheweth mercy and giveth. For such as be blessed of him shall inherit the earth, and they that be cursed of him shall be cut off. You and I, brother, sister, we are going to inherit in the kingdom of heaven. These devils, they're going to inherit smoke and fire brimstone, where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. How shall a young man cleanse his way, but by taking heed thereto according to thy word? The steps of a good man are ordered 
Find the Lord. Not your feelings. No. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Read Psalm 119 sometime today. Go ahead. Do you good. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. We mess up. We sin. But we will not utterly be cast down. We'll reap what we sow. We reap the consequences of our actions. But we're not going to be cast down. We're not going to be cast down to hell. Because we are eternally secure today in this dispensation. If you are of the church of the living God. Saved, born again, converted. I have been young. And now I'm old. Yet... Have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread? He is ever merciful, and lendeth, and his seed is blessed. Because his seed dwelleth within him, his seed remaineth in him. The Holy Ghost, our Lord Jesus Christ. What is that spirit for us today? This is, of course, instruction in righteousness. Okay? Depart from evil and do good and dwell forevermore for the Lord loveth judgment which begins at home with you we're going to look at that in first Pete too okay but it begins with us okay God is God of judgment for the Lord loveth judgment and forsaketh not his saints you're saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God today. Guess what? You're a saint. It's not what Catholics tell you saints are. You're saved, born again, converted today of the church of the living God. You're a saint. The Lord loveth judgment and forsaketh not his saints. They are preserved forever. But the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. Oh, that's the serpent seed. <laughs> Shut up. Shut up. I'm going to link that one too. Thank you, partner. Okay. The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell therein forever. The mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom, the fear of the Lord. <laughs> and his tongue talketh of judgment. That's exactly what you and I of the Church of the Living God do. We talk of God's coming judgment upon the wicked. We speak of the fear of the Lord. These evil, these evil, easy believism devils, they don't speak wisdom. Wisdom is equated unto the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. These easy believism devils don't do that. They have no fear of the Lord. How could they preach it? They want you to be comfortable in your sins. They don't preach departing from evil to change life. They are against it. They hate it. Because they are of Satan himself. Of his church. And the heads that you see, especially on YouTube and on other platforms, they're working with the Jesuits or they are Jesuits themselves. The law of God is in his heart. None of his steps shall slide. The wicked watcheth the righteous and seeketh to slay him. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. There are devils out there who have apparently downloaded every single video of mine. Devils. And they watch you. With, you know, with the magnifying glass. You know. Trying to get anything they can to throw dung at you. You know, when you tell these people to get a life, that's inaccurate. Because they have a life. To make ours miserable. <laughs> to attack us. That is their purpose. That is what they do. That is all they can do. 
It's what you guys are good at. That's the only thing you're good at. The Lord will not leave him in his hand, nor condemn him when he is judged. Wait on the Lord. That doesn't mean idleness. That means service. Wait on the Lord and keep his way. And he shall exalt thee to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see it. I have seen the wicked in great power and spreading himself like a green bay tree. <laughs> Take a look outside there, buddy. Friends, brethren, sisters, church of the living God. Yet he passed away, and lo, he was not. Yea, I sought him, but he could not be found. Mark the perfect man, not sinlessly perfect, but one whose heart truly is the Lord's. And behold the upright, for the end of that man is peace. But the transgressor shall be destroyed together. Oh, like in a 200 million man army. And the end of the wicked shall be cut off. But the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. Not of yourself. He is their strength in the time of trouble. And the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in Him. Amen. Amen. And also too, brethren, Psalm 91, which I've covered in other videos, but we're going through it again. Psalm 91. Verses 1 on to verse 10. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will save the Lord. He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers and under His wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night. Nor for, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Distinction, you see. Do you see? Distinction. Division between the saved and the lost. God is a God of distinction. He puts division. He wants separation. Holiness. Okay? Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Because it doesn't exist. God will provide for you. Not how some of you want, but He will provide for you. You just have to trust Him, not your own selves. And when it seems like, wow, oh Lord, what, what's going on? This is impossible. Remember Moses. Remember Exodus, what we looked at already. First Peter. First Peter. First Peter chapter one. Again, yes, we're going over it. We're going over it again. When it hits the fan out there, brethren, no one's going to be able to claim ignorance. You have been warned. Even with the censorship, even with the tyranny, the truth can be found. You have been warned. 
But if you take not heed, after all the evidence that's out there, after the warnings that have come from us of the church of the living God, the damnation is just. Our God is a God who loveth judgment. He is a God of judgment, who makes distinction between us and the lost, between us and you. Even though you, a lot of you like to say you are, but you ain't. Wherefore, uh, 1 Peter uh, chapter 1, 13 to the close of the chapter. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts in your ignorance, but as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. And if ye call on the Father who without respect of persons judgeth according to every man's work past the time of your sojourning here in fear the fear of the Lord and even Paul says submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God okay we are to fear God our Lord Jesus Christ our Father for as much as you know that you are not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition of from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifested in these last times for you, who by him do believe in God, that raised him up from the dead, and gave him glory, that your faith and hope might be in God. Seeing ye have purified your souls, in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. We love him because he first loved us. See that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. And again, a pure heart is a broken, contrite, and fearful heart. Fear of the Lord. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, corruptible seed, fleshly, but of incorruptible, by the word of God which liveth and abideth forever for all flesh is as grass and all the glory of man as the flower of grass the grass withereth and the flower thereof falleth away I'll link the previous video brother where I go through uh, Isaiah chapter 40 okay but the word of the Lord endureth forever and this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. And 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 17 on to verse 19. See, we're in the falling away. And going through these things, like I said, absolute suffering reveals. And absolute suffering reveals absolutely. Remember Job. How are you going to be when everything is taken away from you? And see the measure of some of these who call themselves Christians. Like my father. How are you going to react when you lose your millions? And that steel of the Jesuit Punyard comes back and takes you far earlier than you needed to go. First Peter chapter 4, verses 17 on verse 19. And this again, brethren. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. There are many who say they are of us, but they are not of us. Hence the falling away. The weeding out process. Putting distinction, division between those who are and them who ain't. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, 
What shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and sinner and the sinner appear? Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to Him in well-doing as unto a faithful Creator. Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. Come on, fingers, work with me. Not against me. Romans chapter 1. Verse 16. On to verse 22. No, on to verse 23. Romans 1, verse 16 on verse 23. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. A Greek is a Gentile. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness, such as easy believers and devils. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shewed it unto them. We're made in the image of God, spirit, soul, and body. We don't have three persons living... <laughs> For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Perfect of a verse to debunk evolutionary religion. This didn't come by chance over millions of years. Trillions. Galaxy far, far away. No. God said. Ta -da. Because that when they knew God, just here, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, believing that they are their own gods. Which all you lost people, you 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 professing Christians included, um, that's you. And changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, and to birds, and four-footed beasts, and creeping things, worshiping and serving the creature yourselves rather than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. Brethren, God can and will provide for you. Maybe not how you want, but having food and raiment, let us, there, let us be there with content. And the Lord has been so merciful and gracious unto us through you, the Church of the Living God, His body. And we thank you so very much to every single one of you. But also to those who pray for us. Prayer. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. We thank you for your prayers. And we covet your prayers more than anything. Because remember brethren we serve a God who answers prayer so that's going to be it for this video and on to my beloved brother who um, who gave 
who I speak with and gave notes for this. Um, thank you, brother. Yeah, this th I don't think this was headed in the direction that neither of, uh, neither of us thought, but the Lord's will be done. So, thank you. Anyway, brethren, that's going to be it for this video. going to get this uh, video uploaded and uh, hopefully be able to have some fellowship today. Lord willing. We love you so very much and thank you. Thank you so much for all of you who pray for us. Please continue to keep us in your prayers. It's not getting easier. And on to all of you. I can't, we can't name you. We can't. Or else you'll have your reward. The Lord give you fruit. The Lord make all things abound unto you. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching this. If you do, hopefully this will help you. Hopefully. Love you. See you in the next video, okay?